So, if you love movies, you need to go to Sundance before you die. Obviously, I'm not Robert Redford, so I don't know all of the secrets to Sundance, but I have been there a couple of times, and I pretty much just want to break down how anyone can go to Sundance, what's the cheapest, most affordable way to go, and how if you go to Sundance, it'll completely change your life and be a top five life experience second to like having a kid. So what is it? See, there's a bunch of film festivals throughout all of the world, a lot in America. I personally love Sundance and it's my go-to because they premiere a bunch of my favorite movies. You get to see them super early. You might even run into a couple of filmmakers here and there, but it's a festival that's held at the beginning of the year in Utah and it's split between three spots, Salt Lake City, the Sundance Resort, and the hub of it all, Glorious Park City. So how can you go? Pretty much there's three things to break down, and the first two I think are the most expensive. There's obviously travel. If you live close, that's not gonna be that big of a deal. You just, I don't know, probably walk to the theaters. If you drive, at least you now have a car to get there. But if you're flying into Salt Lake City Airport, that's where the tickets can fluctuate, and I usually think if the price is around here, then you got something good to go off. But once you find a way to get there, probably the thing that's gonna cost the most is a hotel. Now again, you're there for a film festival, so you don't need the whole damn thing that's got a jacuzzi and a spa and a sauna and all that. Unless you're rich, you don't need that. You also don't want to go super cheap to the point that you're sleeping in your car because um, it's Utah. It's, uh, it's pretty cold. But like I said, there's three spots to look at, three spots to stay at. I personally always find the best hotel rates in Salt Lake City because it's a much bigger city. There's a bunch of theaters there that you can go to that are holding screenings. But obviously, you're gonna want to spend some time in glorious Park City because that's where everything's happening. It's just 30 minutes away. So you can do what we've done in the past, which is book a cheaper hotel in Park City. Then if you have a car or transport of any kind, you can just do the 30 minute drive to Park City there and back every day if you're willing to do that, if you love the mountains, if you want to save a little bit of money. Because if you do stay in Park City where everything is happening, the thing is, is that you're not looking at the 90-ish a night. You're kind of looking at $250 a night for a very small room, if you're lucky. So my suggestion is this. Stay in Park City, but stay with a group. So pretty much instead of paying the 250 a night, you're going to be paying like 400 or 500 for an Airbnb, villa, or a condo. But because you have like five people, you'll just divvy it up and it'll be the same as staying at Salt Lake City, but you can stay at the hub of Park City. If money isn't an issue for you and you don't want to stay in Salt Lake and you don't want to stay with other people in Park City, um... The, the third place, Sundance Resort. It's uh, it's really cool because that's where they were keeping the festival for the first couple of years before they expanded. Bunch of memorabilia, but um, you probably take out a mortgage for one night stay. So you find a way to get there. You know the spots to book a room. Let's talk about the movies. Tickets usually go on sale in the fall, so you have enough time to check out the site, which ones you want to go for. But my breakdown goes like this. The festival is two weeks long, and I always recommend the second half because it's a lot cheaper. If you just want to see a couple of movies, the tickets individually come out to around $20 a piece, so that's the best way to go if you just want to see a few. But I highly recommend the ticket packages. For $500, you can get 10 tickets, two awards party tickets, and two credentials, which means that you can get into certain venues where they're holding parties or different types of things. If you're under 25, however, you have to get the Ignite package. The Ignite package is literally half the price. So for $250, you're still getting 10 tickets, but an extra five vouchers to redeem as tickets when you get there. You also get a credential, but you also get to RSVP for these special events where you get to meet filmmakers, you get free food, you get to meet new people, you might meet the love of your life as well, I don't know. Once you buy your ticket package, they'll send you an email confirming it, you wait until they update the schedule in around December, and then they'll give you a time slot shortly after so you can book your tickets. But I recommend these three things when it comes to that. One, look at previous program years, right? Like you'll get the entire schedule, the whole catalog that'll give you like bits and pieces. There's not many trailers, but you'll get to see who's in the movie, what it's about. Watch anything that interests you, but also look back at like 2013 and 2014. See what category is producing what would be your favorite films and watch stuff from there. I love the narrative competition. I love the premieres, but don't be afraid to watch other movies. Two, I always check the dates. If a movie's coming out on Netflix the following week or the following month, I personally would say watch another movie, right? Watch the movies that don't necessarily have a release date, haven't been picked up yet, that are getting a lot of buzz because 
then you're seeing a movie that may be for Oscar contention way early. Maybe you're seeing a movie that doesn't get distributed till years from now. Watch the stuff that, you know, isn't going to come out right away. I personally look at anything that doesn't have a release date, like as soon as March or April, because I want to make sure that I'm watching something that, you know, I don't want to risk it not being released for a long time. Third point is remembering the three spots. Salt Lake City is a city, so you're pretty much going to get the theaters driving distance from each other. You won't be able to like walk to the different theaters. Park City, while all of the theaters are very close to each other, they pretty much turn the athletic center, the library, the Holiday Inn into screening rooms. It's really cool. There is a, there's no need for a car because pretty much you'll be able to get the free shuttle system that'll take you from spot to spot. But don't be like me and book something over here in Park City and then it turns out your next screening that you booked is all the way at the Sundance Resort, which is 40 minutes away. Again, if you're rich and you don't want to worry about buying tickets or anything, $3,000, uh, again, <laughs> the cheaper half, and uh, you could just walk in and watch anything that you want. So like I said, you're able to find the cheapest flight to get there. You're able to get a group of people, so you find a cheap place to stay in Park City, and then you're able to get the best ticket package for you. Here's five other things to take note of. One. If the moment I mentioned transportation, the flight, that was already boosting up your budget, know that you can volunteer. If you volunteer, you're helping out with the festival, they give you like the super nice jacket, a couple of vouchers to go see movies and maybe even get some food. But know that it also gets uh, taken like really quick, so you wanna hop on that if you want the cheapest way to go to the festival. Number two is something that you think would be very obvious about wearing snow boots and keeping warm with a jacket, yet every year there's always someone who looks like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. On top of that, I would add that get yourself sunglasses, because if you've ever come out of a movie in the middle of the day, then you gotta daredevil your way into the parking lot to your car. Now imagine how bright it is when the sun is being reflected on super white snow. Number three is knowing that there is an e-waitlist line. So even if you don't have tickets to a screening that you wanna to go to, two hours before that showtime, you download this app, you click away so you're able to reserve a spot, you get to the venue in time, 30 minutes in time, and then you'll be able to get in. Cause I'm pretty sure the way that they do it from my knowledge is that 70% of the seats in the theater are sold to ticket packages and stuff like that. 30% is then available for the press or pass holders, and then any extra room, they'll let you in. You pretty much just pay in cash, $20, or you can use those vouchers we talked about. But the biggest hint I'll give with this is, um, be patient if you're in the e waitlist line. Number four, food and sleep. Definitely get sleep because you're gonna be insane if you're, if you're not getting enough sleep. And know that when it comes to food, there's only like two chains if you're in Park City. Salt Lake's got a bunch. Park City's got like a Burger King and a Nine Signs from what I know. There's a bunch of mom and pop shops that you should definitely go visit. But if you're watching four to five movies like we do, carry a bag. They, they check the bags when you get into the theater, but you can go to the fruit market and get a bunch of snacks, get a bunch of coffee, especially if you're doing the midnight run movies, which are, they're completely fun. But you gotta get yourself some Red Bull, a uh, blueberry Red Bull, cause that's the one of choice for us. Finally is the fact that while you are going to a film festival, you can do more things than watch movies, right? Go and visit places. The ski resorts are fantastic. Go, like I said, eat, visit people. There's like art exhibits, there's VR exhibits. There's a bunch of different things you can do. Uh, the, I don't go to concerts and the little like clubs, but they have that as well. And some of the stuff that they even do since the festival is sponsored by Stella is that you can go to certain places. They give you like water bottles, a couple of merch, snacks, coffee and a bunch of free artois that can fill you up. So those are my tips for Sundance. I think that everybody, if you're a movie lover, you definitely need to go visit it. I hope that this breaks it down a little bit better because I didn't know anything when I first went and I learned from my mistakes. I'm not the spokesperson for Sundance, right? I'm just a person who loves going to Sundance and I wish that every movie lover got a chance to go. Uh, so definitely email the people at Sundance. If you have a question for me, comment down below. Go ahead, DM me on Twitter. I'll try to answer everything uh, that I possibly can and who knows? Still got an extra spot in that condo. Someone needs it. <laughs>